Well, at long last we have made it. The final of the three great ninja scrolls, the Shoninki. Again, I am working with Anthony Cummins, who has dedicated his work to discovering the truth about the Shinobi of Japan. And again, you can get a copy of the Shoninki in English under the title, The True Path of the Ninja. But before we dive in, let's start with a quick roundup. So far, we have looked at the Bansen Shukai by Fujibayashi Yasutake, the Shinobi Hiden by Hattori Hanzo, and now we have the Shoninki by Natori Masazumi. Together, these three manuals dominated shinobi research in the 20th century and gave us most of the information about the ninja we know today. And interestingly enough, all three have one thing in common. We actually do not really know how the titles are pronounced. Japanese ideograms can be read multiple ways. And without the correct phonetic markers, the world has had to make an educated guess on how each title is said. The Bansin Shukai could be the Mansin Shukai, the Shinobi Hiden could be the Ninpiden, and Shoninki could be Seininki. The first two in our list are quite mysterious. The Bansin Shukai was written by Fujibayashi Yasutake of Iga, but we actually don't know much about him. Records are scarce, and we can only piece together bits. The Shinobi Hiden was written by Hattori Hanzo, but we do not know which Hattori Hanzo or even which lineage. Also, with both books, we do not know which military school they belong to, if any. But this is not so with the Shoninki and its author, Natori Sanjuro Masazumi. In fact, quite a lot is known. Surprisingly though, it was not known until recently when Anthony decided to dive deep into the history of Masazumi himself and his school. So first will be a short history of Natori Masazumi and the school, then we will move on to the contents of the scroll. Natori Sanjuro Masazumi was born sometime between 1620 and 1640 and died in 1708. He was a samurai of Ki or Kishu province, Wakayama prefecture today, and was a personal aide to the son of Tokugawa Ieyasu, Lord Tokugawa Yorinobu. He started as a form of page or squire and then made his way up the ranks to be a part of Yorinobu's personal entourage, protecting him and looking over his needs. Depending on the date of his birth, he was either an early teenager or young man when the Kian Revolt took place, where Yui Shosetsu tried to destroy the government with whisperings that he was in league with Tokugawa Yorinobu, who was then put under house arrest in Edo. We know from official records that Notori Masazumi was serving Yorinobu most likely in Edo during the Great Fire of 1657. Later, Masazumi would write that fire, which starts from the smallest of things, can become an uncontrollable inferno. The Natori family started out serving Takeda Shingen, where the founder of the school of Natori Ryu, Natori Masatoshi, served in Shingen's vanguard throughout many of his battles, and then joined the Tokugawa after the downfall of the Takeda in 1582. The Natori family settled in Ki with Ieyasu's son Yorinobu, and as the Edo period got fully underway, Natori Masazumi became the third Grand Master of Natori Ryu and wrote down a complete collection of military teachings. His aim was to capture the warfare tactics of old and stop them from disappearing, because at this time, most of the popular military schools started to fade away as the swordsmanship fad and other martial arts dojo culture took Japan by storm. Zen martial arts became prominent, and the old, brutal ways of war fell into disuse. Because Masazumi was absolutely dedicated to preserving ancient military ways, he was named Yusui Sensei, which is a play on old Chinese poetry, which means water that drips until it wears away rock. And it represented his research as a man who would dig deep until he found all of the information, just like the drop of water. From this point on, we will call him Isue Sensei. He retired around 1680 to the village of Ono, at the base of Mount Koya, so he could visit Tokugawa Yorinobu's grave, as his master had died in 1671. Isui Sensei died in 1708 and was interred at Eunji Temple, which still holds his grave, death tablet, and death certificate. The temple can be visited still today, and you can see the grave of the old ninja master. The soul of Isui Sensei is now under the care of monk Yamamoto, whose family have headed the temple since the early 1600s. 
Before we move on to the subject of shinobi skills, it has to be highlighted that for over 100 years, all that was known about Isui Sensei was that he wrote the Shoninki and came from Ki. However, Anthony and Yoshie Minami has spent years tracing down all of the unknown scrolls produced by Isui Sensei, and they have been translating and publishing them in English in the Book of Samurai series. To truly understand the shinobi ways of Natori Ryu, you have to read Isui Sensei's teachings from the beginning. At present, two volumes have been published, Fundamental Samurai Teachings and Samurai Arms, Armor, and the Tactics of Warfare. Please remember that the Shoninki must be read in context with these. Natori Ryu, which means the traditions of the Natori family, is also known as Shin Kusunoki Ryu, which means the new school of Kusunoki, which is sometimes shortened to Kusunoki Ryu. However, this is not the same lineage as the Kusunoki Ryu that claims to be directly descended from the famous Kusunoki Masashige. Official records name the school Natori Ryu, but we know that the alternative name Shin Kusunoki Ryu was presented to the school by Lord Tokugawa Yorinobu. Sometimes you may hear the name Kishu Ryu named after the place they lived, but this was a 20th century invention by the Japanese. Many people have jumped to the conclusion that Natori Ryu is a branch of Takeda Tactics, or even Koshu Ryu itself because it is connected to the Takeda. But this is not true. Natori Ryu is made up of over 20 different manuals, Ichoninki being one of them. In truth, Isue Sensei used the old Natori family scrolls, which focused on medicine and tactics and greatly expanded on them, making an analysis of all the schools he could, including interviewing many of the last survivors of the Sengoku period to ask them what war was really like. Interestingly enough, earlier we spoke of Yui Shotsetsu and the Kian Revolt. Well, Yui Shotsetsu was a student of Kusanoki Fuden, and the pair were quite famous. Throughout his life, Isui Sensei combined his family teachings with the way of war and of old soldiers and focused on the teachings and lineage of Kusunoki Fuden, which is why Lord Tokugawa Yorinobu renamed Natori Ryu as Shin Kusunoki Ryu in honor of Yoi Sosetsu. However, throughout the centuries, the umbrella name for the whole school was Natori Ryu. Isui Sensei is famous for writing the Shoninki, but in fact his shinobi teachings start much earlier in the first scrolls of Natori Ryu, and the Shoninki was one of the very last scrolls he wrote. For some mysterious reason, this prolific writer on military strategy stopped writing in 1681, and seems to have never written again, dying in 1708, as we have already said. The kanji characters for Shoninki mean true shinobi account, and in his introduction he says that many schools of shinobi skills have appeared, but what they teach is just basic burglary. He means in his scroll to teach the true essence. The Shoninki is divided into four basic parts, an introduction and the three main chapters, and in some transcriptions there is a final word from Isui Sensei's grandson, Natori Kozaiman. In fact, we can track down where each transcription is from if it includes this ending. The original Shoninki, like the original Bansen Shukai and Shinobi Hiden, has been lost. No one knows where it is now or if it has even survived and it is estimated that approximately 12 transcriptions are in existence today. The Shoninki appears in the work of Gingetsu Ito around 1910, whose work has been translated by Eric Shahan of Shinobi Books, who you can find on Instagram. The Shoninki then appears in an updated 20th century magazine and was also published in 1944 during the war, copies of which can still be found. Then later it was republished multiple times in Japanese, notably by Dr. Nakashima and of course Anthony Cummins and Yoshie Minami. Other translations that exist have been produced by Don Rowley, Claude Shuldra, and Alex Mauser, and it continues to be a favorite manual for the history of the Shinobi. So what does the Shoninki actually tell us? Remember that Isui Sensei wrote down the basics of his shinobi skills in the Book of Samurai series. The Shoninki is like an intelligent conversation about the shinobi to someone who already knows the skills. That is why it sounds sophisticated and is multiple layered. Each time you reread it, new information comes to the surface. But let's go through it. Isui Sensei starts with a basic introduction to the shinobi, giving some Chinese history and of course mentioning the excellence of the people of Iga and Koka, which for more information on them, go back to the beginning of this playlist. He then moves on to explain the different types of shinobi, from Sun Tzu's five types of spycraft to local guides, external listeners, and even thieves. To set the reader's mind in the correct state, he tells a story about an apprentice who wants to perform all of these magical skills of the shinobi, such as disappearing and reappearing. 
to which the master says that the apprentice is misguided and foolish, and that the ways of the shinobi are nothing like that. In fact, the way of the shinobi is the way of kyojitsu, that is the mixture of truth and falsehood, or the substantial and insubstantial. This is a very important concept in the art of war. The first scroll is called Shoninki Shokan, and it contains the following. It talks of the six tools of the shinobi, something you may or may not be familiar with. This is because it only comes from this manual, and yet has made its way into pop culture. The six tools are a straw hat for hiding in crowds, a grappling hook for climbing walls, writing material for taking notes, often in code, medicine to keep a shinobi well on missions, a 90 centimeter piece of cloth that can be used for many different things, and fire starting equipment for arson and surviving in the wilderness. Yet be careful, these tools are almost always associated with the shinobi, but actually, Natori Ryu teaches that these tools can be swapped out for better tools. The manual talks about seven disguises, such as monks, merchants, and street performers, all of which can help a ninja blend into crowds. Isui Sensei tells us of the ten ancient ways of the shinobi, from the use of voice to dreamlike skills and the highest skill of ninjutsu in emptiness or void ninjutsu. He teaches how to find your way in the mountains or to find villages, to walk in the snow or find footprints covered in a snowstorm, how to tie grass and leave markers. He briefly explains the different types of footsteps used to change your perceived identity in the dark, or how to tell the difference between shapes at night. The manual explains how to gain entrance into people's homes by pretending to be sick and returning with gifts after being helped, or to insert a mole into a household and bribe people. He explains how to bypass security checkpoints or infiltrate by attaching yourself as a servant to other people, or even better gain information you need through bribing men of the cloth by offering large donations because most monks and holy men were all well positioned in Japanese society. The manual talks about changing your hairline, growing beards, starving yourself, and using makeup to change appearances. It even explains how to infiltrate an enemy battle camp when it is being constructed, or the best times to make a raid depending on the energy of the enemy. It talks about passwords, secret signs, and distractions, the many things needed on a secret mission. He deals with crossing castle moats, using rafts, bamboo snorkels, and iron spikes to climb up the most vertical Japanese castle foundations. He describes the now famous use of climbing up a castle wall by using a katana by standing on the hilt and using the sageo cord to pull yourself up. How to break through fences, disguise yourself as a dog or cat through sound, poison guard dogs or befriend them. In other manuals in the Toriryu, he also talks of skinning dogs and using the skin to drive guard dogs crazy while the shinobi infiltrates from the opposite side. He talks of how to use two and three men teams to enter houses and how to create false fights so that one agent can seek shelter in an enemy house. Overall, the first scroll is the nuts and bolts of the shinobi, a manual on practical skills. The second scroll is called Shoninki Chukan. The middle chapters. The middle scrolls take a different turn. They deal less with direct things, such as astronomy, astrology, and chi, including magic. The ancient night sky was divided into 28 lunar mansions and star positions, and Isui Sensei talks about Sun Tzu, wind predictions, and the chi of the sky. While he does briefly mention shinobi tools such as the saw, grappling rope with bamboo cylinders used as a ladder, and other ways of entering houses, he quickly returns to a more abstract slant. In this part, he gives us another story. This time, a master asks his ninja students to steal a very large jar from his shop, but no one can do it. The master shows them how. He steals many little jars from many shops and sells them cheaply on the street. When he has enough money, he buys the jar. The lesson of the story is for the shinobi to think outside the box. This story appears in many places such as the comic book Path of the Assassin, but the original is found in the Shoninki. The manual then moves on to talismans and words of protection, and dips into spells which can make people argue or become friends, and even spells of personal protection and protection for your home. He talks of how it is best to move across the landscape, how to avoid having to sleep in the wilderness by using brothels, or by forming false friendships in various areas, maintaining entire families so that Ishinobi has a place to stay in safety. The scroll then talks about how to use people's own faults against them, how to use their ego and pride to get them to tell their secrets, how to use flattery, and also how to defend yourself from such deceptions. 
At this point though, the manual totally changes course and gives us a mini essay on face and palm reading, an ancient skill which found its way from India to Greece and from China to Japan. This is where the manual gets extremely esoteric and talks of future predictions and marks of omens. The third part of the scroll is called Shoninki Gekan. While the Bansin Shukai and Shinobi Hiden has wonderful teaching on the Shinobi ways, nothing compares to the depth and sophistication of this third scroll of the Shoninki. It is a gem in the world of medieval psychology. It introduces the reader to the concept of Mamon no Ikan, the gateless gate. In Buddhist philosophy, the gateless gate is a barrier between yourself and enlightenment. It is gateless because nothing is stopping you from becoming enlightened, only yourself. Therefore, there is no actual barrier. For a shinobi, the gateless gate is the distance between the thoughts of a person and their look and speech. What people say and what they think are two different things, and Isui Sensei tells us we have to pass this difficult barrier to read the minds of our enemies. It teaches how to see the enemy's conversation in patterns. Is the information they say too high level for the general intelligence of a person? Are they trying to avoid certain topics, or are they trying to push certain avenues of conversation? Using a poem, Isui Sensei shows the truth of the Chinese meaning for spy. The ideogram for spy is actually a gate with light shining through the cracks when it opens. This is the essence of the shinobi, to infiltrate the enemy using any gap they create without any chance of them blocking you. He then teaches us about the styles of conversation, sometimes known as shido no ho, the four ways. A shinobi should sometimes be rigid in speech, flexible, strong, and overbearing, or weak and timid. These ancient Chinese ways are useful in all aspects of the shinobi. The scroll then looks at how the mind works, focusing on the seven emotions of delight, anger, sorrow, pleasure, love, evil, and greed, and how each one of us hides our true nature and yet presents a false front to the world. This is the essence of Mumon no Ikan, the way of getting past the interference of humans and seeing into their minds. The document then engages with the profound concepts of Dori, the way of constructing truth, and Riko, the way of constructed logic. Ishinobi must use their mind to process truths and identify constructed logic, but they must build constructed logic to form plans and deception, and defend themselves with the eye of truth. It is a difficult game played between people's minds and in some cases can result in the death of a shinobi if their intentions are found out. Coming towards the end of the scroll, Isui Sensei starts to explain how the human mind works in accordance with the five Chinese elements and the cycles of creation and destruction, and how people will adapt their situations, be they good or bad. If a shinobi perfects the mind skills explained in the Shoninki, then they can master the way of deception and understand when others are trying to deceive them. He talks about letting go of life and death and understanding the concept of samsara, on how not to become a failed person on the path of enlightenment. His explanation of the path of the shinobi is a good metaphor. He says that the arts of the shinobi are like a void. You cannot see the edges, you cannot define it as a whole, but you know it is there. It has a form within no form. He talks about the concept of shinmyoken, which is to pierce the enemy's mind with the sword of your own mind and to read their thoughts. He explains that the mind of the shinobi is much more dangerous than any trick or skill. For Isui Sensei, the true way of the shinobi is like a hawk flying high in the sky. It does not threaten anything, but all birds and animals run from it because they know how dangerous it can be. It is a natural predator, just like a true shinobi. The last chapter is called Rijutsuho, and it means the way of departing. This is a beautiful statement because it is the last thing he ever wrote. At the time of writing the Shoninki, the Shinobi were falling from grace. They were no longer champions of the warring periods, and many of the Shinobi around Isui Sensei were men of Iga and Koka, who had fallen from samurai status to lower level guards and servants. So Isui Sensei reminds us that the job of the Shinobi is indeed a job for a Bushi warrior. It is an important task because it takes great mental discipline and great learning. Something common farmers who have to tend to their fields cannot do. These are the shinobi skills of Natori Ryu, and the Shoninki is the school's greatest scroll. Antony wanted me to tell you that you can get a full list of the skills from the Shoninki for free. You simply have to go to his website, click on Natori Ryu, click on downloads, and open the first folder. 
The full skill list is there for you and you can share it with your friends. And if you want to read the manual in full, you can get a copy of The True Path of the Ninja. But with that said, this concludes our dive into the three famous ninja manuals. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot from it. Remember to go check out some of Anthony Cummins books which I will link down below and to also go check out his great YouTube channel. And subscribe to him if you haven't already. But anyways, thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.